You're watching Connection TV with Pastor Titus Lee. Thanks so much for joining us today. You are about to receive a fresh word of insight and truth that will take your life to the next level of growth and victory. Be blessed and enjoy. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today on Connection TV. I hope that you're having a blessed, faith-filled day. I, pr I pray that praise is on your lips and joy is in your heart. I am so glad that many of you call us every week or you call in periodically to pray for us and let us notice to stay uh, on the air, continue to uh, air these programs. We're grateful for your prayer and your support. Your love and kindness makes a great difference. And I want you to know that we're praying with you and we're praying for you as well. In partnership, great things happen. Let's continue to stay connected. Throughout this program, that number will be on your screen. You can call at any time for prayer. You can call at any time uh, because we are here to connect with you. We have been in a wonderful series entitled Embracing the Call of God. And we've talked about the call of God in our first teaching, what that is and was, and then the wake up call in the second teaching of this series, how God uh, awoke up Samuel out of his natural and spiritual sleep for him to fulfill the assignment that was upon his life. And then the last teaching was entitled Call to Your Lane, staying in the lane of your divine measure and capacity so you can operate in and be effective in that particular lane and grace. And today we want to talk about catching up to the calling. You're probably wondering, what are you, are you speaking of Heinz ketchup? No, no, I'm not speaking of ketchup that you would put on a sandwich or a hot dog. No, catching up or pursuing your calling. Um, I want you to look with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17 says this. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Now, I want to break down that word circumspect for a moment. It's really a compound of two words, circum, uh, to circumnavigate and then to spectate. So when you circumnavigate or circle something, that means that you, you literally have a full revolution around the thing. And then to spectate means to look at. So the word circumspect actually means to have a well-rounded view in this context, a well-rounded view of the purpose and call of God on your life. You may not understand it all, but at least having the right vantage point that will give you an advantage as you strive to do the will of God. So it says, see that you walk circumspectly or with a full view, not as fools, but as wise, as the wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You know, we often pray, Lord, let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The will of God is the most important thing, uh, the, should be the most important priority in our lives. The will of God. The will of God is the determination of God. Within his determination are his purposes and the callings, the jobs, the tasks, the assignments, even the effect in those assignments are all in the will of God. And as I've shared with you in this series, you are called to do the will of God. You are called to be effective in the will of God. But understand that time is very, very important. Time is essential. Now, when Paul was writing to the church of Ephesus, he revealed several areas of how the Christians should walk. You know, Ephesians is really a book about spiritual positioning. We learn in the book of Ephesians where we're seated. We're seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. We learn how we should walk and walk worthy of the vocation in which we're called in Ephesians chapter 4. We learn how we should stand in Ephesians 6. Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having on a breastplate of righteousness, you know, basically donning the armor of the spirit. So Ephesians really equips the believer to know who he or she is. Do you know God wants you to know who you are and what you're called to do? So in Ephesians chapter five, Paul really digs into the walk. In Ephesians 5, 2, he says, walk in love. Ephesians 5, 8, 
He says, walk as children of light or under the illumination and revelation of Jesus Christ. And in Ephesians 5.15, he says, walk circumspectly or with a full view or a, a sense of awareness and comprehension about what you're called to do. Redeeming the time or buying back the time. You know, when I think about timing, I think about the life of Moses. You understand that Moses lived 120 years. Moses was the great deliverer of Israel. God raised him up as a prophetic voice to go into Egypt and command Pharaoh to let God's people go. But what's interesting is, is that Moses' life was barely, was basically broken into thirds. The first 40 years of his life, he resided in the palace and in the household of Pharaoh. He was wealthy, renowned, well-known, even though he was a Hebrew, he was raised, partially raised by Pharaoh's daughter. And then at the age of 40, he, he had this encounter with this calling that was upon his life. And he, he took certain actions that were inappropriate, but yet the calling was still there. And then at the age of 80, he had an encounter with God in a burning bush. And he went back to, Israel, uh, back to uh, Egypt and fulfilled the full part of his assignment. You know, sometimes we have to understand that the anointing or the grace of God is upon you. But at times we, we must mature into that calling. Other areas of our lives must catch up to that calling. Have you ever had a day in which you were just behind? You felt that you were behind. Um, you wake up late, so you eat your breakfast late. You, you get in your car late. You rush through traffic. You're playing catch up all day. Sometimes it's like the rhythm never gets right if you have the wrong start. Or perhaps there's something that's developmentally delayed. It can be an individual, it can be a project, and you have to overcompensate for it to catch up to reach the particular level that it should be at, at that stage in this existence or in his or her life. At times, we get behind and we have to run to catch up to the calling, redeem the time. Come on, I want you to say it with me. Say, I'm going to redeem the time that God has given me. So catching up to that calling simply means that, that God oftentimes has to mature us in our character so our character can match the calling. Do you know that the gifts of God are without repentance? Do you know that God gifts us and graces us to do certain things? even before we can literally grasp the magnitude of it. So I want to say to you, like Moses had a raw calling, he had a very raw calling. You know, the scripture says in uh, Exodus chapter three, uh, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter two, verse 11, it says, and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. He looked this way and that way. He looked around. There was no one who saw him. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And he went out the second day and behold, two men of the Hebrews were striving together or fighting. And he said unto and he said unto him that did the wrong, wherefore didst thou smite thy fellow? And then the man asked, who has made you a prince or a judge over us? One of the guys that were fighting. He said, will you kill me like you killed the Egyptian, the Egyptian slave master that was abusing one of the Hebrews? Will you kill us like you killed them? So at that point, Moses panicked and he became a fugitive and he ran. He left Egypt. And he went into the land of Midian and sat down by a well. Now the verse, uh, verse 16, look with me to Exodus 3, 16, and it says, now the priest of Midian had seven daughters and they came and drew water and filled their troughs to water their father's flock. Now look at verse 17, check this out. And the shepherds came and drove them away. The men came and drove the daughters away. They were bullies. They were abusive. They were unfair. But it says, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Now, one of those girls was actually became, was Zipporah, who became Moses' wife. What's amazing here, what's profound here, is that you see Moses in the rawness of his calling. He was a fighter. He was a defender. 
He had a desire to stand up against wrong, but he was so raw that the calling was far ahead of his character. That's oftentimes the case with individuals that I've been able to work with over the years. And perhaps we've seen in the news media, sometimes they have been typecast as violent or gangsters or uh, even drug dealers. Sometimes these young people frequently are, they are called to be agents of change and they're going about it the wrong way. Satan has perverted that calling. They're so raw and reactive. They're operating out of anger and operating out of frustration and sometimes even isolation and identity crisis that they are acting out of their ignorance, not knowing that there's such a high call in their life. They, re they um, devolve, if you will, and they default into fleshly, carnal reactions that causes some of them to be incarcerated. Do you know that there are business owners and CEOs who are selling drugs? God had really called them to own businesses and go to the next level? Do you know that there are people who literally God has raised up to be agent lawyers and defenders of the innocent, but they got frustrated, got involved in gang activity, they began to operate outside of the will of God, and they made mistakes? There are Moseses all over Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, small town USA. There, there are Moseses that are operating in their emotions. They have this devotion that they can't quite understand. They're called to greatness, but they're operating out of anger. They don't understand. There's no circumspection or full view of what they're called to do. They're raw. So God proceeds to test them and develop them. Sometimes he has to remove them out of the mainstream. He has to take them out of the normal flow and seclude them and separate them. He'll use whatever he has to use. He'll use a mentor. He'll use a teacher. He'll use incarceration, God forbid. He'll use whatever he has to use to get them on the right track so they can fulfill their assignment. When we come back, we're going to talk about the importance of character development because as God develops character, you're able to fully embrace your calling, catch up to your calling, and do what he called you to do. Stay connected. We will be right back. Are you looking for a place to grow and fulfill your spiritual destiny? Then join us at Southside Worship Center. We are located at 7724 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. We are a vibrant ministry where people care and overcome. You'll receive dynamic teaching and anointed worship along with relevant programs for the children, teenagers, and adults in your family. We have two dynamic services on Sundays at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Word Workout at 7 p.m. Be sure to check us out at sswcchicago.org or on Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Hi friend, for over 25 years, Operation Link Up has been making a difference in the lives of teenagers in the city of Chicago, Illinois. We emphasize three things, mentoring, motivation, and mobilization. Will you take a moment and think about how your prayer and your support can help us continue helping them? Take a moment and watch this. We've seen a mother who lost her son. We've heard strategy on how to connect with bully teenagers. We've also been equipped with insight on how to teach our youth how to war and take authority spiritually. Operation Link Up is a teen program that holistically empowers teens to excel. Since 1996, Operation Link Up has been mentoring, motivating, and mobilizing youth between the ages of 12 to 18 years old in Chicago, Illinois. Through our weekly empowerment programs, Teens are equipped to have good character, excel academically, master the performing and martial arts, learn audio and visual production, as well as be positive community shareholders. In spite of the hopelessness and discouragement among today's teens, Operation Link Up continues to shine bright and make a difference. We ask you to stand with us that we may continue to empower this generation. 
Your prayers and monthly financial gifts will enable us to expand our outreach efforts and services to teenagers on the southwest side of Chicago. Will you stand with us today by giving a special gift toward the mission of Operation Link Up? Your one-time gift or a monthly gift of $25 will enable us to continue to impact teens in a relevant way each week. Together, we can make a difference and reach this generation. Please go to ConnectionTV.net today and click on Operation Link Up to give your financial gift toward this vision. Or you may mail your gift of support to Connection TV, P.O. Box 437-740, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. Thanks so much for standing with Operation Link Up as we empower today's teenagers to excel. Your support is so vital as we strive to reach many of the hurting and hopeless teenagers of Chicago. We say at Operation Link Up, before you send them to jail or send them to hell, send them to us and we can, we can make a difference. So will you pray about giving a one-time gift or a monthly gift of support to Operation Link Up? It will be so very appreciated and it will help us accomplish our goal of reaching teenagers one youth at a time. Thank you so much for your consideration and continue to pray for us. And we will continue to reach our teenagers. Together, we can make a difference. God bless you. Welcome back. We're talking about catching up with your calling. Before the break, we were discussing Moses, how he had a raw call in the first 40 years of his life. He reacted in his emotions. He murdered a man. He missed the mark. But the call of God did not change upon him. And I want you to know that God does not change his mind about you because you missed the mark. Sometimes he'll take you out of circulation. He'll take you out of commission, if you will. He'll decommission you to perfect you, and then he'll recommission you as he did with Moses. He, he, Moses went for 40 years and he was mentored by Jethro, his father-in-law. And I believe Moses learned then how to govern himself, how, how to carry that calling responsibly. And then one particular day in Exodus chapter three, the Bible says while Moses was with his flock, he walked past the burning bush and it was burning and it wouldn't burn up. He saw it, I believe several days and it would not burn up. And then he walked over and God said, I am that I am. I've chosen you and called you to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses gave every excuse why he couldn't do it. But God had called him specifically to be a deliverer of his chosen people. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, God said, Come now, therefore, I will send you unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. That's the purpose why that was the purpose for which Moses was born, to draw God's people out of bondage. Even Moses' life, he had to be drawn out of the Nile River under adverse situations as a baby. And now God was sending him back to draw God's people out of Egyptian captivity. And then the latter part of his life, the last 40 years after the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea, he was trying to draw them closer to God in keeping his law. It's amazing. God anointed Moses to draw his chosen people out of bondage and into a closer relationship with God. But we see Moses had to go through the steps of development and then he had to redeem the time. Let me say this as we conclude this teaching today. Oftentimes the calling upon your life precedes character development. Oftentimes when you are raw in your calling, passions override principles. That's one of the statements that I have with my staff. It's always this, never allow passion to be greater than principle. Principle must govern your decisions. Sometimes a person can be gifted, but unprincipled. That's why the, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher is essential in the life. The fivefold ministry is essential in the life of every believer. It's not that the fivefold is any better than you, it's because, or better than, than those that follow them. It's because they, they have oversight. They have an official function to help develop and perfect God's people. Do you know that this is very important on the local level? Sometimes there are people that are very gifted and anointed. They're called by God to do great work, but they've never yielded their gifting. Hence, they've never been developed and or disciplined 
or had to follow instructions or be restructured by someone with more experience. Therefore, they go and they move into the even the mid and latter stages of life, still making the same mistakes as they did in the earlier season, even though they're called and gifted, that gifting was never grounded. Moses had to be grounded by Jethro. He had to be grounded by somebody in his life that would help develop him. This is so important because if a gifting is never grounded, if talent is never made to be accountable, a person can have all type of flaws that God wanted to perfect in earlier seasons that are never perfected. They're never developed. They're never refined. Hence, they never are able to fully fulfill their potential. God uses the fire to perfect the callings that he placed upon us. In fact, he said through the prophet Isaiah, I've chosen you in the furnace of affliction. God has chosen you in the fire. The Bible says he will allow us to go through the fire, through the trial of faith, because all of those things refine us. Moses had to be refined. Maybe there's a young man in your life he may be acting out, a young woman, she may be acting out in the church context, in the classroom context, in the neighborhood context. Don't throw them away. Don't discard them. They just need to be developed. You see, callings must be mentored and tempered. I'll say it again. Callings must be mentored, which means to guide, and tempered, which means to be um, properly prepared or, or put under stress. When metal is tempered, that means that it is made hard, it's, it's developed, it's, it's heat it, and it's cooled and it's heated and it's cooled so it can fulfill its role in whatever it is a part of. God mentors us and tempers us. There are many young Moseses in our cities today there are many of them. There are some in their 20s and 30s, and they feel like that they have got outside of the call of God. I'm speaking to you today. If you feel that you've missed the call of God, young man and young woman, maybe you're middle-aged, and you say, you know, I, I thought I would have done more by now. God is able to make the most out of what you have left if you're an available vessel. You can catch up to the call. You, just start run, you can run a little faster, run a little harder, pray more, walk by faith, and believe that God will perfect those things that concern you. When Paul said redeeming the time, understanding what the will of God is, what he was actually saying is, is that, that the will of God, once you understand it, you have to make the most or buy up your time. Make the most of every opportunity. God's going to give you some opportunities to serve in your ministry, to serve in your community, to serve in a school context, to serve in a neighborhood that you're in, and buy back the time. In other words, procure it with faithful service. The call of God is always ahead of us. Remember that. And entering into the fullness of the calling requires a high level of pursuit. Pursuit means that you go after that thing with aggression. You have to walk by faith and not by sight. You have to serve and you have to be diligent and you have to be faithful. When Moses went back to Egypt, he was faithful. He, he had to go before Pharaoh multiple times with his brother Aaron, but he did not give up because he pursued that calling in the last third of his life. God used Moses to bring them out. The children of Israel out. Moses got to the foot of the promised land. He didn't go in, but God used him in the last third of his life to shake the world because God had called him from his mother's womb. I want to say this to you. See your calling for what it is. See it in its totality. View it from the angles of God's word, where the word of God says all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. Everything perhaps has not been good, but it works together for your good. It's a part of the ingredient of the greatness that God is baking up and making up in your life. I want to say to you, redeem the time now. Stop complaining and feeling sorrowful and pitiful over what you've gone through. Run after the calling. Do you remember Jonah? After he got out of the belly, after, after he was vomited out of the belly of the whale, he ran after his calling in Nineveh and God blessed it. Run after your calling. Here are some things that you can do to redeem the time in your life. Number one, make the most of every service opportunity. 
Your calling always entails a job, a task, and, excuse me, a job, an assignment, and a task. And so within that, Sometimes you may be working on one level. You have a vision to go higher in that calling, but make the most of every task. Make the most of every job. Make the most of every assignment in the local church. Make the most of it in the school. Make the most of it in your workplace. God sees it, and he'll raise you up if you will make the most of it. Max it out. Be your best. Another way that you redeem the time is seizing the season. Grasp the season. Realize that it's the right time for you to lean in to what God has called you to do. And thirdly, remember this, you can only redeem time when you esteem time. I'll say it again, you can only redeem time when you esteem time. Moses went back to, Israel, went back to Egypt at 80 years old. And to, by today's um, uh, um, standard, it would have been time for him to retire, but he went back at 80 and God raised him up to save a nation. Esteem your time. Redeem the time, understanding what the will of the Lord is. God's will is for you to prosper and to fulfill your assignment. Run after it. It's not too late for you. It's not over for you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that every person watching will catch up to the calling, pursue your purpose, and do your will in their churches, in their homes, in their neighborhoods. I pray especially for our young people, many of whom have been castigated and discarded because we have not understood the rawness of their calling, but refine them that they may make the most out of their days. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Call that number on the screen. We're here to pray with you. And remember, your best is yet to come. Are you looking for a place to grow and fulfill your spiritual destiny? Then join us at Southside Worship Center. We are located at 7724 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. We are a vibrant ministry where people care and overcome. You'll receive dynamic teaching and anointed worship along with relevant programs for the children, teenagers, and adults in your family. We have two dynamic services on Sundays at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Word Workout at 7 p.m. Be sure to check us out at sswcchicago.org or on Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for watching Connection TV with Pastor Titus Lee. We hope that you have been blessed and encouraged by today's teaching. We know that God has great things for you and your best days are ahead of you. We would love to hear from you. Feel free to visit our website, which is connectiontv.net. While on our site, you may listen to a message, explore our teaching archive, sign up for our newsletter, give an offering of financial support, or request prayer for any need that you may have. You may also call us at 773-471-3370 for prayer needs or to request our message of the month. Please mail your letters and gifts of support to Connection TV, P.O. Box 437740, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. We look forward to sharing with you again. Until then, let's stay connected.